Hi everyone, it's Patty Alaka back with some tools for living. I hope that you're feeling well today, but even if you're not, I'm really glad that you've chosen to spend this time with me. I'm really excited about what the Lord has put on my heart to speak about today. Today we're going to go over another uh, distress tolerance skill called self-soothe. The Lord has a lot to say about that, but before we get started, let's go to prayer as the Lord reminds us to pray without ceasing. Heavenly Father, wonderful Lord Jesus, glorious Holy Spirit, we come to your throne on our knees in humility today, Lord. You are the Alpha, you're the Omega, you're all that exists. Everything that we do, everything that we don't do is for you and for your glory, Lord. We give praise and honor and glory to your holy name for all the ways that you're working in our lives, Lord. Lord, I just thank you so much for bringing me and whoever is watching this video into this space, Lord. And I ask that you heal us physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and relationally. Teach us what it is that you would like us to know about the concept of self-soothe. Uh, not my words, but your words, Lord. Not my will, but your will, Lord. We ask all of this in your powerful and mighty name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So thank you again for being here today. I'm really excited about this topic. Uh, for anyone that has raised children, uh, when they're babies in particular, uh, the term self-soothing often comes up. And it's always a good idea to teach a child how to soothe themselves. You know, the idea is that we want them to learn how to settle themselves, how to get out of fight or flight or some fear, uh, crying, screaming, and to be more in that restful place where they can just be peaceful, calm, and relax. I love to watch babies self-soothe. Um, I'm using a picture on the thumbnail just to kind of get an idea of that. When we can just watch a baby or a child to, uh, you know, just simply learn how to entertain themselves. You know, that was more popular back in the day, I think, when I was a baby, um, that there weren't so many gadgets. Nowadays, there's so many gadgets that whenever a child is sad or crying or scared, we'll just distract them with a gadget. Uh, but back in the day, we'd be in a playpen and we would learn about counting our toes and our fingers and or watching the sunrise. And so uh, it, the same idea applies to us as we get older. And we really want to see how it is that when we're going through a challenging situation in our life, who here has been through a challenging situation in their life? I know I certainly have. And sometimes it's really hard to pull away from that. But I like to remember that whatever we focus on expands. So when we're going through a challenging time in our life, if we keep focusing on the same thing, minute after minute, hour after hour, day after day, year after year, what do we focus on? What expands? Whatever that challenging circumstance is. So we're asked and we're invited to shift our focus onto something else and to learn how to self-soothe. So um, we're going to go over some strategies today. Um, mainly what's really beautiful to think about is to focus on our five senses. We are so blessed that the Lord is with us at all times always. The Trinity, the Father that made us, the Son that saved us and the Holy Spirit that lives within us is within us at all times always. And all we need to do is to invite him into our heart and ask him to take our burdens. We can just envision the cross and any worries, any concerns, any situations that you're finding challenging in your life, just put it right at the foot of the cross. You can envision just wrapping it up in bubble wrap, putting it right at the foot of the cross. And in exchange, just feel his grace, his mercy, and his peace. Remember that he died for our sins because he loves us that much. He is there with us at all times, always. And all we need to do is to call him right into our heart. So I encourage you to remember that the Lord is indeed with you at all times, always, throughout the day, throughout the night. Just envision the cross and know that he is with you. Invite him into your heart. And he has created us so fearfully and so wonderfully in our mother's wombs. He tell, tells us that in his word. So 
as we go through um, remembering that we have this beautiful body that we live in and we have a soul which is comprised of the mind, the will, and the emotions, and we are a spirit, we can remember that whatever we're going through, whatever challenges are happening in our life, we can go right into that prefrontal cortex of our brain, take a step back, pause, and breathe. Invite the Lord in and ask him to help us to be fully present. So when we can focus on our five senses, often we can get out of our head and get more into our body. Very often we're thinking, thinking, thinking and churning so many thoughts. And the beauty of focusing on our five senses is oftentimes it helps us to get out of the thinking mode, out of our minds and help us to get more in our body. So I want you for a moment right now to take a step back, to breathe, to pause quietly between the in-breath and the out-breath and feel yourself being here right now. And we're going to focus on our five senses. So for a moment where you are right now, I just want you to be aware of what you're seeing. See if you can come up with what you're seeing and then be aware of what you're hearing. What sounds are you listening to right now? Be aware of what you're smelling. See if there's an aroma in the air. Be aware of what you're tasting. See if there's a taste in your mouth, even if you're not eating or drinking anything right now. See if there's a taste that's in your mouth. Be aware of what you're feeling, how maybe your clothes are feeling on your body, if there is a, a coolness to the air or a warmth to the air. And see if you can even wiggle your toes and feel your feet grounding. So right here, right now, be aware of your five senses. And then later on, as a homework assignment, I want you to practice. I encourage you to practice. Pick a spot, pick a time. Uh, maybe you can go outside this week and be aware of nature. Nature is just such a beautiful way to ground, such a beautiful way to stay connected to our five senses and do the same thing. Be aware of what you're seeing, See if you can even come up with three things that you can see in nature. Be aware of what you're hearing. See if you can listen to three different sounds in nature. I love, you know, uh, in the springtime where we can start to hear the birds singing again. It's so beautiful. See if you can notice any birds that are singing or any other animals or any other part of nature making sounds. Be aware of the aromas that you're smelling. Be aware of what you're tasting and be aware of what you're feeling. If there's a cool breeze, feeling um, the sun perhaps, being aware of what you're feeling in your body. Such a very powerful contemplation. The Lord reminds us that he is the I am. He's not the I was and he's not the I will be. He's the I am. That means he's right here, right now with us. And the most wonderful way to be in the present moment is to take a step back, breathe and pause and focus on your five senses. Another suggestion that I have for you this week, uh, in your quiet self-reflection time, in your journal time, I want you to think about your five senses and come up with three ideas for each of your senses that you know is very nurturing to you. And you can start thinking about that right now. Again, going through all five senses. What are some things that you like to smell? 
maybe lighting a scented candle or smelling flowers or a cologne or a perfume or a bubble bath. Uh, but Or maybe even just uh, smelling mint tea or yeah, an herbal tea. Uh, whatever helps you uh, get into the habit of noticing what you're smelling, what you're tasting, what you're feeling, what you're seeing, and what you're hearing. And I encourage you to do this also throughout your day. Take a pause, take a step back, and see if you can allow your five senses to be fully present. As you do that, you will start to develop the habit of getting out of that fight or flight where we're doing, 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 and being more in that rest and digested place where we're more of a human being and we can really appreciate all that the Lord has created for us to appreciate. So let's go to scripture now and let's uh, really bask in the Lord's words and what he has to say about us soothing ourselves. So in Isaiah 41.10, it says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I love that scripture so much in remembering that the Lord is with us at all times always. And he talks about uh, his righteous right hand in helping us with his strength. He gives us his strength. So we don't lean, have to lean on our own strength. We can lean on his strength and trust that he is with us every moment of every hour of every day. And in Psalm 16, 8, it says, I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be shaken. I love that visualization so much too, just knowing that the Lord is at my right hand. He is at that place of my strength while I am leaning on him and his place of strength. So powerful. And in Joshua 1, 9, it says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. So bask in your senses. And while you're doing that, remember the beautiful strength that he has given you and the, cor the courage that he has given you. In Proverbs 3, 5, 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Amen. I love that verse so much and remembering that, again, he's with us at all times, always. So take a pause, take a step back and breathe throughout the day and remember that the Lord indeed is strengthening you and strengthening your path. In 2 Timothy 1.7, it says, For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. So it's a time to just be in the moment, breathe, focus on your five senses, and trust that the Lord is strengthening all that we are. In 1 Peter 5, 7, it says, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. So be in that place of remembering that the Lord is with us. Any cares, any worries, any concerns, Put it right at the foot of the cross and feel his love, grace, mercy, peace, light, uh, all of that that surpasses all understanding. And remember that as he does that, we can be in the present moment basking in our senses and embracing the beauty that he has created in this world. In Philippians 4.13, it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. He strengthens us. He gives us his anointing. He loves us. He straightens our path and we can do all things through him. We don't have to do things on our own strength, but we can lean on him and trust that he's working in our lives. In Psalm 37, 4, it says, delight yourself in the Lord 
and he will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. I love remembering that so much and um, how he invites us to be the spirit that he has created us to be and to focus on his Holy Spirit. In Philippians 4, 6, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So it's just a wonderful opportunity to remember that he is asking to take all of our burdens. He wants to take all of our burdens and in exchange, feel his presence, his love, and his grace. And in uh, Romans 8.31, it says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who shall be against us? Amen. When we can focus on our wonderful Lord Jesus and know the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and we are living in the spirit that he has created us to be, and we follow his will, he's for us. Nothing else matters other than knowing that he is with us. And when we follow him, he absolutely strengthens our path and he gives us his strength. And we'll end with Romans 8, 28, which is probably my all-time favorite verse. All things work together for good for those that love him and are called to his purpose. Amen. So when we uh, just lean on him and remember that all things, all things work together for good for those that love him. When we love him, he takes all of our burdens and he helps to use all of them so that we can lean on him. And when he calls us to his purpose, just simply meaning that when we love him and we want him to use us, he absolutely makes our path straight and he uses everything in life. So everything in life is either a blessing or an opportunity to grow, which is also a blessing because it strengthens us and it helps to grow the fruit of our spirit. So I encourage you this week in your self-reflection time, in your journal time, Focus on your five senses. Be in the present moment. That will help you to be more quiet and still and lean on his understanding and not on your own. I hope that this message was helpful for you today. I would love to hear from you if you have any comments or questions, or if you would like to schedule a session to go deeper. I am a clinical pastoral counselor, a life coach, a nurse, and a therapist. I would love to work with you. My email address is clinicalpastoralcounseling3, the number three for trinity, at gmail.com. That's clinicalpastoralcounseling3 at gmail.com. I am praying for you every single day, and I ask that you please pray for me too. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye.